Okay, we have two derivative equations on the spot. The first one is the derivative of ln of sin x. And for the second one, yes, we just switch the order. We have to take the derivative of sin of ln x. So, as always, please pause the video and do the easier one first. Alright, this right here is actually easier because it only takes two lines. So, here we go. To differentiate ln of something, we just do 1 over whatever that is, which is just sin x. And then, because of the chain rule, Use the chain loop. we have to multiply by the derivative inside. And the derivative of sin is positive cosh. And then of course, the input is still x. And that's pretty much it. And in the end, we see cosh over sin. We can simplify that and write that as hyperbolic cotangent, right? hyperbolic cotangent, and the input is x, like this. And that's it. Hyperbolic cotangent x. And for the second one, okay, here we have sin of ln x. Of course, if you would like, you can actually differentiate this first and then multiply by the derivative of ln x and so on. So that's one way to do it. Or you can actually simplify this expression first and then differentiate. So it's like up to you. I will do it as how it is first and I'll show you guys another way. So here we go. To differentiate sin, we get positive cos. It was similar to that. But here is the input ln x. And the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of ln x, which is just 1 over x. So this is pretty legit, but we can actually do better. And here is the deal. Cosh of something. So let me just write it down on the side. We know that if we have cosh of an input, let me just use t for the input. This right here is equal to e to the input t and then plus e to the negative input t and all over 2, like this. So when we have cosh of ln x, I can write this down as, you no, know, simplify that, I can just plug in ln x right here. And I think I'll do that right here real quick. So this is cosh of ln x. And I'm going to just plug in ln into all the t's. So we get e to the ln x and then plus e to the negative ln x or over 2 like that. And do it carefully. Here, the e and ln can cancel each other out. But for this one, in order for us to cancel the e and the ln, we have to take care of this exponent first. This is like saying negative 1 times ln, and I can bring this to the top to become an exponent. We have to clear this number right here first. So in another word, we actually see this is, let me just write it down again, e to the ln x and then plus e to the ln x and then that's to the negative one power and then all over two. And now we can cancel this and that, this and that. So on the top, it's just x plus x to the negative one power over two like this. And of course, if you want to simplify this a little bit more, you could, or you can just plug in this right here, in here, that's fine too. So let me just do that right here. So all this is just x plus x to the negative one over two, and we have to multiply by the one over x. And in fact, here you actually get complex fraction because this is like saying one over x in blue. So finally, what we are going to do is, let's just multiply the top and bottom by x right here. And we will see that x times this is just x squared. x times this is just going to be plus 1. And of course, 1 times this doesn't matter. That's why I didn't really worry about 1. And on the bottom is just 2 times x times x. In another word, 2x squared. And with that, we are done. So. This is not a bad way to do it. And if you would like, you can actually do it this way. You can actually simplify the expression first and then differentiate. So it's up to you. I will show you that real quick. So differentiating sin of ln x. And you just have to use the different identity for sin. So I will write it down right here. We know that sin of an input, and I will use t again for the input. This right here, it's equal to e to the input, which is t, and then minus e to the negative of the same input, which is t again, 
all over 2. So we know this is actually similar to cosh because earlier it was a plus and now it's a minus in between. And for this, I will just plug in L and X into all the T's first and then simplify it. And then in the end, we differentiate. So let's see, here we will have sinh of ln x. And I will just plug in ln x into all the t's. So this is e to the ln x minus e to the negative ln x all over 2, like that. And we see that this is similar to that. So I will bring the negative to the top right here as an exponent. So we see this right here. It's the same as saying e to the ln x minus e to the ln of x to the negative 1. So let me just write it down, the ln here, and then x to the negative 1 power. And this is all over 2. Be sure you make sure that the coefficient in front of the ln has to be 1 in order for you to cancel out the e and ln, e and ln. So this is pretty much the same as saying, and let me just write this down, x minus x to the negative 1 all over 2. I will put down the over 2 in the front and then with a parenthesis. Therefore, to differentiate this, it's the same thing as differentiating that. So I will write this down. This is equal to the derivative of and let me just put on one half all the way in the front, so that way it won't bother us. It's just a constant multiple, so it doesn't matter. Just bring that to the front. And the inside is just x minus x minus 1. That's all we have to differentiate. So it's either you do the simplification first and then derivative, or you do the derivative first and then simplification. Up to you. And you will see that this is one half, and let's open the parentheses for the result of the differentiation. The derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of this, you bring the power to the front, minus 1. So it's a positive now, negative times negative, so positive now. And x to the negative 2 power, minus 1, minus 1. So that's pretty much it. And this is pretty much the same thing as saying 1 half times 1 plus 1 over x squared. And from here, I can multiply this by x squared on the bottom and on the top. So, all in all, we see that on the top is just 1 times this, which is x squared plus 1. And then on the bottom, the denominator of the inside is the same, so which is x squared. Let me just write that down. And then, of course, you have to multiply by the 2. And we see that's the same answer as what we got earlier. So, we know we did this right. So anyway, this right here is it.